Hi everyone, my name is Sam Warren and I am the Communications and Outreach Manager at Indiana Audubon and I am part of the Indiana Dunes Birding Festival planning team. Um, I'm the one in charge or the one you'll probably talk, be talking to if you have any registration questions and that's why I'm here today is I'm going to walk you through what our new registration system looks like. We're less than two weeks away from registration. Um, registration begins on March 1st at 10 a.m. Central for Indiana Audubon members and if you it begins on March 3rd for the general public also at 10 a.m. Central. So on registration day or whenever you're going to register, um, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go to our festival website, which is indunesburningfestival.com. You're going to click on the registration tab up here. <clears throat> and then you're going to click on this link. Um, right now it says see the full felt full festival schedule. It will probably say something more like register now, um, but just so you know, this will be the link and that's where you go to click. When you click on that link, you will be directed to our new registration website. Um, many of you have seen this already. It's been available to the public. Right now it's shut down just for this video um, so I can show you guys how to use it, but it has some great information. It has the registration deadline of May 1st. You can also contact us directly through this website as well. And then we have a countdown, 83 days left and counting. Um, before I walk you through what it looks like on the registration side, I just want to point out something that is going to be a little bit helpful this year. Um, when you go to the schedule tab up here on the top, you will actually be able to look at which trips still have availability before you even go through and put in your information for registration. So right here is we have Dunes Big Day. Um, and over here on the right, it says spots taken zero out of 10. Of course, no one's registered, so um, it's completely open right now. But once people start registering, this number will change so you can actually go and see in real time which field trips are available and which ones are not. Um, just a note that if there is no capacity on the trip or the session, like this one here is Dune Birds and Art, it doesn't have a capacity because it's a free session and you don't have to register for it. So don't worry about it. Um, you can come to it as long as you purchase a festival ticket. So. Just a little bit of note, um, when you're registering, if you want to see which trips are available, you can do that. So if you're ready to register, um, up top here, you're going to see on the right a big register now button. You're going to want to click on that. Oops. And you won't see that pop up. I apologize. Sometimes it saves my information because I've been through this a few times. Um, but you'll be taken to this page with your personal inf The first thing you're going to do is give your personal information. And the most important thing about this piece right here is that you choose your registration type first. And this is your registration type here at the top. If you don't choose your registration type first and you go to input all your information and then go back and do it, it may erase your information and then you'll have to start over. It'll be extra time wasted, especially if you're trying to sign up right away and get your favorite field trip. So make sure you choose your registration type first. It's very important. This year, um, I'm just going to take a little note. We've had a lot of questions from Indiana Audubon members. In the past, we've used access codes to be able to register early. Um, Indiana Audubon members do get to register two days early, so they register on March 1st versus March 3rd. This year, there is no access code. On March 1st, the only registration options you will see are the IAS members. Now, you will need to you to be able to register successfully as an IAS member, you will click on the IAS member button for the registration type. And in this first participant information, this section here, you need to use the email address that's associated with your Indiana Autobahn membership account. So I'm just gonna fill in a test one, for example, and show you what happens if I use a random email address. Um, it will actually block me from the system and I can't go any farther. Um, we're also requiring mobile numbers this year just because if um, something happens on a field trip or um, a guide maybe loses someone or wants to get in contact last minute, we wanna be able to contact you right away. So again, I'm on the IAS members. I'm accidentally using my non IAS member email and I'm trying to register if I hit next. I will actually be blocked. So it says, sorry, registration is openly open for members or guides. Um, the same things goes for the guide registration. If you click on IDBF guides, make sure that you're using the email that we've been in contact 
contacting you with through this event site. <clears throat> So no problem, let's say you use the wrong email address. Oops, I have my membership listed under a different one. It'll just take you back to the homepage right here and you can go back and hit register now and try it again. Um, again, for this, remember, India, the most important is Indiana Audubon members. If you click on that, or if you're a guide and a speaker, make sure you're using the email address that's associated with your membership or whichever contact email we've been uh, using for the guides and the speakers. Make sure you do it on this first one and not your guest information. And I'll get to that in a second, how to enter a guest as well. But for the rest of this video, I'm just going to walk you through the general admission adult, um, which all of it will look the same no matter which one you choose on the registration type here. The only difference, again, is that the IAS members and the guides and speakers need to have those emails associated to move on to the next page in the actual registration. So I'm doing general admission adult. I'm going to enter in my information here, doing my email address, first name, last name, and then my phone number as well. Okay, and now at this point, I have my, pers my personal information, I'm the main registrant, but I can also register other people as well. Even if you're an IAS member, you can register one other person. Um, in the in the early registration system, or you know you can register um, you, your whole family or whoever you've got coming with you. So I'm going to click on the register another person. Um, again, you need to choose the registration type first. So let's say I'm bringing a friend. I'm going to bring Brad, our executive director. So I'm going to fill out his information. On this one, on the guest information, we're not requiring that you have an email address, especially if you're bringing a child, they might not have an email address. Um, you can put them in if you want them to receive confirmation emails and things like that, but you don't have to, you can always forward it to them as well. So I've entered their information, this is my guest, and I click add. And then I will actually see them if I scroll down as my additional participants. So I'm registering Brad and myself here. So on this page, this is basically where you decide who you're going, who's coming to the festival and you enter their information. And again, I could register another person as well, um, but let's just say Brad and I are the only ones that I'm registering today. So then I'm gonna click on the bottom, I'm gonna click these blue um, next buttons. Um, you can ignore that pop-up, sorry. Sometimes it does save your information. So if you were to leave and come back, that's what will happen. It's, it was basically just asking me if I wanna pick up where I left off. Um, but for this situation, I do not. So the next page that I'll be directed to is the registration item. So this is basically like your ticket type. So we wanna know, are you coming for the full festival or are you maybe only coming for a single day? And those are where the Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday only ticket options are. For full festival, this includes um, all daily headliners, presentations, and evening, and um, if there's a free evening social, migration marketplace, and things like that. It also gives you access to the Indiana Dunes State Park. Um, unfortunately, it does not include access to the Indiana Dunes National Park. They're instituting a fee this year that, um, so make sure if you go to a national park um, location that you have a national park pass, and we have some more information about that on our website as well. But anyway, um, let's say I want to go to the full festival. So I'm gonna come over here. It says it's $65 and I'm gonna click select attendees and a pop-up will appear. And it wants me to choose who is coming for the full festival, who wants this ticket type. And let's say I'm the only one that can come to the full festival. So I'm gonna click on my name and it gives me a total of $65. If I were to click on Brad's name as well, it would show me my total of 130. Um, but for right now, for this example, I'm going to show you because you can actually choose different options for each of your guests. So I'm going to hit confirm and it shows that I have one selected. So one person on my list is doing the full festival. And then let's say Brad can only come on Saturday. He couldn't get off work. Sorry, Brad. So we're going to click select attendees. And then it's showing me that not selected Brad hasn't chosen a ticket type, but I've already chosen one. Um, I can switch myself if I want but I don't wanna do that. So leave myself unchecked. I've already been selected somewhere else. I've selected Brad. He is gonna do the Saturday only ticket and then I hit confirm.
So now it has one selected, one selected. If I want, again, I can switch them. If you accidentally click the wrong one, it's telling me I've already been selected, but you can switch them. So that's the ticket type. Um, and then once you've chosen which, you know, if you're coming for the full festival or only single day, then you can scroll down and hit next. And this is the page where you're going to choose your field trips and your workshops, other events, what we call sessions. Um, you're going to choose, and again, you, if you have multiple people, you can choose different field trips and different things that you're going on. Um, just to note, all the free sessions, like daily headliners, the presentations, things that are included with your ticket, don't actually show up on this page because you don't have to register for them. Um, daily headliners, the migration marketplace, Eastman, the Thursday kickoff shindig, they're not on here. You still get to come to them. They're included with your ticket or whichever day you purchased, um, but you don't have to register for them. So that's why they don't appear. So I'm gonna scroll down and you will see all of the sessions organized first by date. And then it shows you by um, which group they're in basically. So this is Wednesday morning. So these are trips or events that are starting in Wednesday morning. Um, May 11th is actually our pre-festival trips. So they're a little bit different. They run all day long. Um, and anybody that purchases a ticket can sign up for them. So let's say I wanted to do the pre-festival Birding the Best of Chicago's Migrants. I go here on the right, I can see the price is $70 and there are 10 spots remaining. So it's showing me the capacity as well. And I'm gonna click select attendees. And let's just say I wanna go because remember Brad couldn't get off work. Um, so I'm gonna click on myself and it will show you all your participants and then I can hit confirm. Now, one of the things the system will make sure that you don't do is that you don't choose um, sessions that interfere with each other. So let's say I accidentally get farther down here and I want to go on behind the scenes to the Chicago Field Museum. If I click select attendees, um, again, it will show me that I've already been selected in that group because I can't go on two trips at the same time. If I choose myself, then it will take me, it will move me to this one and it says nine remaining slots but it has actually taken me off of the birding, uh, the best of the migrant hotspots. So you can switch yourself, but it won't allow you to choose overlapping field trips. So you keep scrolling down um, and then we have Wednesday evening trips. Again, these are organized by kind of when they leave. So we have morning, um, e afternoon and evening trips that happen. Um, this is again, the pre-festival. But May 12th is when our festival technically starts. So many of our field trips are going to be down here. So let's say I want to go on the Dunes Big Morning, select myself. So what we see on this one for Thursday is I'm only given the option to select myself because remember, Brad only signed up for Saturday's field trips. So he can't come to Thursday's trips because he only purchased a Saturday ticket. Um, so that's not available to him. So I'm going to click on myself. I'm going to sign myself up for that trip. This page is a little bit long. Um, just so you know, the times are on the right or on the left here, excuse me. And then we've also included the dates at the top of each um, of each title as well, just because it gets a little bit long and you start scrolling and forget maybe what day you're looking at. Um, so this is still saying that's May 12th, which would be Thursday. If you keep scrolling down, then it turns into Thursday afternoon. Maybe I want to go on a workshop on Thursday afternoon. And again, it's only showing me Brad can't come because this still isn't Saturday. I'm going to hit confirm. Um, I'm just going to scroll really fast just to get to Saturday and show you what that looks like. Um, there we have Friday, Friday evening. Um, oh, I don't want to miss the birds and brews on Friday evening. It's my favorite event, so I better sign myself up for that. Um, and then we have Saturday starting. So this is May 14th. We have Saturday morning. And now when I click select attendees, it will show me that Brad can come to this one as well. And again, if you're registering two people, both for the full festival, then you can both register for everything. But I just wanted to show you an example, just in case maybe one of your guests is only coming for one of the days. Um, another thing that you can do is you can actually, you can sign people up for the same trips or you can sign them up for separate ones. So let's say I want to go to the Little Cal River Bottom. Brad wants to go on the Pelagic Tour. I can click select attendees, 
click on Brad and hit confirm. And now it's showing me one selected and one selected. So we're going on different trips and that's totally fine. Um, if I keep scrolling down again, it's going to give me all the options of what I can do. Just a reminder that the presentations and the free events will not show up on here. I want to make sure that I show up on Saturday evening for the keynote and dinner. This one's a little bit more expensive because it includes dinner, but it also has our silent auction as well. So I'm going to sign both Brad and I up for that to make sure we go to that event. Um, I'm going to scroll back up to the top really quick, but I just wanted to show you guys what this looks like. And again, a reminder that if you get lost in this page, the date shows up at the top um, of each of the titles so you can see. And if you scroll up to the top, let's say you've been here before, you um, know exactly what field trips you're looking for when you come to the sessions page, you can actually use this search tool at the very top of the page on the left to search for the field trips you want. So you don't have to sit and scroll and look for what um, trips you're looking for. So let's say I want to go on a Coles bog trip. I know exactly. If I type in Coles, it will turn up all of the Coles bog trips that are happening throughout the festival. So a Thursday morning one, Thursday afternoon, maybe I want to go on the Friday morning one. Um, I can click select the attendees. Again, it's not Saturday, so Brad can't go. And I can hit confirm. And then maybe I want to go on one of the pelagic tours. I can click on that. Again, I have to remember that you're looking at the dates to make sure you choose the right one. Um, and I already signed Brad up for that as well. So just a little tip, if you do have your field trips already picked out and you've looked at the schedule, you can simply type it in so you don't have to sit and scroll through all of that. Um, so that's kind of it for this page. Once you pick all your field trips, very important job, you can scroll all the way to the bottom um, which is also where you'll find the post-festival field trip to the UP um, with Matt Aglesky. They're going to look for Kirtland's Warblers up in, um, up in Michigan, sorry, not the UP. Um, so you can select that as well. But let's just say I've picked my field trips. These are what Brad and I want to go on, so I can click Next. Maybe. <laughs> and then it's going to bring me to a registration summary. Now, at this point, I should point out that, unfortunately, there is no way for us to hold your spots until you completely go through the system and pay for your trips. Um, so right now, it's showing me a registration summary, which is great, but if I'm in a real hurry, read it really fast and then hit next um, so that you can get to the payment um, type. Um, just a reminder too that you can modify your registration or if let's say on this summary you see something you click the wrong thing you can hit the previous button and it will take you back to the sessions page um, here okay and again you'll have to scroll all the way to the bottom to click on the next um, if you want to see it does show you the registration summary by person so here's me Sam Warren here's my agenda my ticket type is the full festival showing me at $65. <clears throat> and then we have the guest information, and if you click this little arrow sometimes it hides the guest information just to sh make it smaller, but you'll have to click that little arrow and then it'll show you the information for your guest Brad has a Saturday only ticket and he signed up for two trip two events that day as well. So if I'm good with that, I hit the next button and then it will bring me to the order summary and the order page. And the order summary up here is basically um, gonna be the same as the past page, but it's showing you with all the prices and adding up your subtotal. So it's doing that by person. So it's showing me that my trips and my ticket are going to be $286. And Brad's down here, if I click the little arrow, are going to be $66. And then my order total is going to be here in yellow at $352. Um, if you scroll down, if you're good with that, then the only payment method we accept is a credit card. So you'll need to choose the credit card option, tells you your total due, and then we'll ask for your credit card information. Um, if you keep scrolling, fill all this out, and then hit submit, then you should be good to go. I'll show you what that looks like on the next page. But before I do that, um, one thing that we did, we do have codes for is some people either purchased their ticket as a Christmas present and received a code, or maybe they received it, or maybe they got it as a gift or a giveaway or something like that. Um, and if you have one of those codes, what you'll need to do is put that in right here. It says enter your discount code. 
So you'll type it in, hit apply, and then it will take off. Um, it will take off the total value of your ticket. Now, it will show up kind of in a weird way, but make sure that you're looking down here where it said it will say discount and look at the dollar value and make sure that if you bought, you know, if you pre bought your $65 basic registration, it's showing that $65 is off. Um, don't look at it kind of takes it all off on a discount level. So it takes it off of each item, but make sure you look down here at the disc total discount and that'll show you. Um, I think I know one of them. I can show you what I mean by that. So in this situation, um, it, right here it's saying total discount is minus $65. So this was used, maybe we gave away one free ticket um, during some event. And so make sure you just look at that total discount, not maybe where it's pulling the money from, um, because sometimes it does it a little bit weird and we'll pull it as a percentage of each thing. Don't worry about that. It, just look at the total discount at the bottom. Um, I can also remove a discount code. Not sure why you'd want to remove a discount code, but just in case you accidentally type something in. Okay, so let's say you put in your discount code, you've done your payment method and you hit submit. Um, it will, I'm not gonna hit submit because I'm not gonna register myself, um, but it will take you to a confirmation page that looks like this. Um, it will show you, congratulations, you're now registered. This is your confirmation number. Um, it will also be emailed to you. Make sure that you keep this email or this confirmation number just in case anything happens. Um, again, it's giving you your registration summary. It'll give you a countdown. And then this is the point where if you want to modify your registration, maybe add a few field trips, change them, you can click these buttons here at the bottom and hit modify registration. Yours won't have these boxes around them, but again, I'm just showing you on the back end because I couldn't type in my um, credit card information. So you can modify your registration or you can cancel it. We hope you don't cancel. Um, another note is that if let's say you hit submit and one of the trips that you signed up for happened to be full, people got there quicker than you. Um, unfortunately, again, it doesn't save it until you hit that submit and your payment goes through. Um, what it'll do then is let's say you signed up for one trip and it was full. Um, it will not sign you up for that. It will only charge you for the trips that you are able to get into. And it will tell you that it's full and not show up on your summary. Um, <clears throat> but then you can go back if you want. So let's say it was a Thursday morning trip. You could go back and modify your registration and add another Thursday morning trip on there. And then it will just charge you for that trip as well. You can go modify your registration at any point. Um, when you receive this confirmation email, it will have a link that you can modify it as well. Again, it's only going to allow you do it, to do it for the trips that have availability. Um, so yeah, that's basically what registration will look like on the day of. I'm sure you guys will have other questions that come up and some other things. You can contact um, us at any time at through that website, the contact us but button or the info at indunesburningfestival.com is probably the easiest way to reach us um, as well. So also another thing that's great to check out is on our main website, um, I'll show you here quick, we actually have a frequently asked questions tab if you're on our main website under festival info in the FAQ um, at the bottom. So we have some general information about the festival as well as registration. And this is going to be really important. I'd highly suggest just reading over this after you watch this video um, and kind of familiarizing yourself with that. It also has our contact info down here at the bottom. I need help. Who do I contact? That would be me. Um, and it lists our phone number as well as the email address. Please just remember that on the day of registration, March 1st and March 3rd in particular, that it does get really busy and we're gonna do our best to answer questions as quickly as possible. But just leave your voicemail, um, your name, or leave voicemail with your name and a contact phone number to get back to you. And we'll get back to you in the order that they come in as best we can. Um, hopefully this video walkthrough helped you understand a little bit what to expect. And again, um, we hope you're able to register and we hope to see you at the festival festival this year. So thanks everyone.